Okay. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, our try to bridge the gap between sensor information and data or reverse. So, what is the challenge here is that we have had RV uh, a lot of systems, platforms, devices, sensors, whatever, from research platforms, from observations, from observatories and uh, remote operated vehicles and whatever. And the idea is to bring it together to have one data flow of the whole <coughs> stuff here. So it's an increasing heterogeneity of instruments here and um, aligned data formats, standards, methods, all you can think about and what we will hear in the next, uh, next days here. We have uh, small and individual approaches and ideas how to uh, handle data and we have very large projects on the other hand side. So we have to bring it together in one approach. Scalability is an uh, issue here for technical solutions, of course, but also for curation steps. So what is the uh, impact of the data? What is the metadata? Uh, what are vocabularies and so on? So we come to the idea or the yeah, data mission uh, that we want to have a modular virtual research infrastructure, which is designed for to support the science work. And in particular, it's interesting to give the flow from sensor observations to archives and publications here. So some technical um, objectives here. It must be generic as possible. So if we have to align to each use case and it's all a little bit different, it's very hard to uh, be sustainable here and provide up-to-date services. Interoperability is a topic here, of course. Um, supports for standards and vocabularies, for example, as mentioned before uh, by Dick, for example. Um, what we have to do is a seamless integration into existing information systems or with existing infrastructure here. Last but not really not least, the user friendliness of the simple of the whole approach is really. Uh, really critical here. So um, we have a blue picture here <laughs> from the left hand side. It's called Data Flow Framework here. The concept from the le left hand side we have different platforms, research vessels, stations, whatever, up to buoys, for example. The first part is the uh, sensor description here. Um, sensors, devices, platforms have to be described. It's um, based on sensor ML. A few slides later, I come to some details. The next part is the uh, streaming component, which is uh, built to get the data, uh, harvest the data from the, plat from the platforms, and bring it together in our storage systems, but also in a database called the real-time database. And then we have a dashboard here, upper right, which is can be used to visualize current data, but also delayed mode data. If we go further to the right, we have uh, some other components here. Um, the part of analysis and workspace. It's a science workspace, so to say. And I give some uh, details later. It's uh, aligned to cloud ideas and so on. On the right-hand side, we have repositories like Pangea for archiving and publication of data sets and portals or web solutions for integrating the uh, metadata and the data together. <coughs> Just an example. Here we have a, a remote operated vehicle called Beast and such a sensor platform has several aspects uh, which can be described. For example, here are uh, Subdevices. The beast has multi-beam sonar, for example, and temperature sensors and so on. It has some properties for the current for the whole platform, but also for devices and sensors. Parameters: it measuring uh, temperature, for example, 
resources can be aligned, like fact sheets, manuals, whatever. It has descriptions, manufacturer, model numbers, asset numbers, for example. Contacts are interesting for data scientists, owners of platforms or sensors. And actions are interesting for describing what's going on here with the platform. So it's aligned to sensor ML. And just a screenshot here from the sensor uh, web tool. It's public available here. And what you can see is a listing of stations we have descriptions for. And if you go into uh, one description here, you see on the uh, top blue line that we have um, the possibility to enter some metadata for uh, core uh, descriptions here, but also for contacts and so on. What's interesting in this slide is uh, this uh, information here. It's called device URN or code. It's in, let's say, an identifier for the instrument here. And what's also there is the uh, possibility to uh, versionize the metadata content of the sensor description. So if you put some special events here or actions like deployment, calibration, and so on, a snapshot of the information will be generated and um, gets a handle so that it's citable. What we have here is a versioning available. Um, there is a RDA um, interest and in working group here about um, persistent identifiers of instruments. We have a use case there. Um, currently, we have about 1,700 descriptions of platforms, devices, and sensors. And okay, it's all about metadata here, but what's about the data? So, just to give you a slide here, um, currently we have um, uh, several hundreds of sensors here, and here you are able to see um, some sensors on the left-hand side and last, um, last data, which arrives here in the near real-time database. So we have the distinction between storage and near real-time database. Uh, which is uh, provided with a, a data web service here to say. The data web service is used to ingest data and to get some data out. There are quality flags, for example, aligned to Argo principles here. What can uh, all the, or other procedures can be installed here. Uh, monitoring, alarming functionality is interesting and how to come to my data. So it's a web service here, some descriptions, but we can do better than that. So here's a dashboard um, with a simple uh, plot, scatter plot here of temperature data at small board. This was a um, <coughs> sensor platform I said before. Uh, small board is a use case here. And uh, scientists are able to um, bring a dashboard, create a dashboard with plots, for example, with text, with images, describing the data we have here. This is also the, the dashboard component. Uh, heat maps and maps um, are possible here. But what's also interesting is the upper smile, upper part here, where you can go to uh, through the time. So not in the <laughs> to the future, but on the past. So if you have the light mode data, you can visualize it here. It's highly user customizable and is based on the sensor descriptions we have in the sensor component, uh, component in the first step. So going a little bit further here, analysis and workspace as a topic. Um, currently, we have a large, or large project called Helmholtz Data Federation. It's about building infrastructure for uh, storage and compute solutions. And the idea is here to build a, a community workspace, a science workspace. We have a replication installed between Bremerhaven and Potsdam and providing solutions for one-click um, computing. 
So we are in the cloud, we're building a cloud, and it's in the Helmholtz Data, uh, Helmholtz Data Federation, and it has, has overlaps with the EOS SD, as Dick mentioned before here. So the last, last two bubbles are Hadoop. It's on the agenda to put our legacy data and legacy uh, data systems into um, Hadoop to allow fast data access and analyze analysis on based, based on Hadoop technology. <laughs> and Raster, Rasterman is used to raster data management, so if you think about bathymetry, but also see surface temperature, sea ice coverage, and so on. And it enables to grab some data uh, cubes from the original data here. Just the first screenshot of our marketplace, you can see there are some um, templates for virtual machines and uh, containers here. Uh, most interestingly uh, for our scientists is our studio in Jupiter. So you can go to this, um, we'll go to this platform here and you know, let's say um, grab some resources to build your applications on it. It's a hybrid approach so it's possible to link uh, Amazon Web Services and uh, VMs from Amazon, for example, here. And just go a step further. Here, just to give you an idea, it's in our studio, uh, rolled out from the marketplace here, and you can do your uh, science here, for example. But what I really like to go some more into details and hope it works now is then to give you a screenshot or a dump of a Jupyter notebook here, which also um, is based on the marketplace here, but uses the services in before. So just to give you an idea about using the data services is here for example do an import of the DWS, it's a data web service uh, interface for Python in this case. Uh, put one line here to the, say, I'm interested in sensors called uh, Svalbard uh, temperature with wildcards and you get a list of possible sensors and uh, parameters here. You can put a further line to Go with the data, download data, plus the line, specify the code, as I said before, give some time range, give some aggregations, for example, and the data is in the uh, Jupyter Notebook in the cloud, so to say. So, of course, you can plot the data here, basic, oops, uh, basic uh, Python here, and what is about the metadata? Here, just run through the line here, and you can download the data, metadata and see it for a temperature sensor here in this example. It's a JSON document um, specific to the sensor, but you can also download or grab the whole metadata description we have in our sensor component. Here's JSON, but sensorML is also available. So I have to scroll it <laughs> down here since it's not online. It's also all metadata about the, the station here. And I'd like to show this here. Um, what you have defined for the station and um, parameters here are some properties like uh, ranges where the temperature lies in. So I just grab the range here, do a small check, a range check, and oops, and go to the data here and see what's happened. Of course, I can search for um, fossil parameters. We have a CTD here, cool. as an example, CTD 181, and I grab some pressure, and let's say it's depth. So I can 
download the data here for two parameters and put it into a map, into a graph here. So the idea is to bring it very simple together uh, that you have some metadata and you have some data, put it in one liners and say, you do that. And with, um, um, let the information there if you need the information. So Jupyter, as an example, to foster the sharing of code and documenta including documentation. And what's possible is to create versions of notebooks, for example, and use this notebooks for um, supplements as publications. Going to the right side here, some web websites visualizing data. Here we have our map component. This is about map projects where different styles of projects can uh, be brought together. Here we have a picture of some uh, buoys in the Arctic, for example. What we're providing here is um, basic or standard services. Let's say for the bathymetry here, based on Artopo, for example, as well as standard products derived from satellite imagery. So um, chlorophyll R, CIs, whatever. Data publication and archiving is here uh, done with Pangea. It's an example from uh, Torben Wolf, uh, who operates um, the AOV power. And what I like to say is the data sets have toys, of course. We have orchids here to identify Tom. We have links to publications all the way as, a, as an example. But we have also, just a slide back, here links to the handle, the sensor version. So we have the deployment of the AV power, and this is a description from power, the sensor system. And it's linked together. So um, what we not have in place today, what we uh, build is in semi-automatic data flow, if you use the data flow um, into Pangea. So we have the sensor description, we have uh, contacts and responsibilities. So bring it together, build the metadata together as far as, it's, as it is possible and upload it to Pangea. The other part here is a data portal, just a screenshot here. Um, of course, there are links or track lines of current expeditions or last expeditions uh, from the right hand side. Um, direct links to data to search for data. We are also using Elasticsearch since a few years here. Expeditions and services. Interesting here is um, to mention such collection. It's called collection, where we have um, the possibility to align or bring data and data products together. Here we have some uh, CIS concentration and we have some chlorophyll. You can go through the time and see what's happened there. And you can also put some measurements on here. This is a track underway measurements from Polar Stern, for example. So the idea is to provide interactive data products, so to say. So some words where where the whole stuff is in action. We started some years ago in the Farm project. It's a larger project at AVI, 25 million euro in this direction, which was where the idea was to put instruments in the Arctic and of course collect data and analyze data. Then we are in Digital Earth in the Helmholtz project, um, which uh, goes to build infrastructure and services for data management and data analysis. It's really, uh, really infrastructure here. Moses is a use case, so to say, from Digital Earth. Helmholtz Data Federation, I mentioned before, we have around 5 million at AVI to build storage and computing solutions here. And then we have on the left-hand side Mosaic, the International Arctic Drift Experiment. That's 
uh, with a budget beyond uh, 100 million euro. Um, just to go into some picture here, from Mosaic we have will get data from the air, from the uh, aircraft for example, we have data on the ice and ice itself as a as uh, samples for example and going to the depths of the water. Just a few figures uh, to give you an idea about Mosaic. <laughs> Um, involved are 70 nations, 300 people in the background, and 600 researchers, experts will be in the field. And the interesting part, why I'm talking about Mosaic, is we are placing uh, the ideas and what we are building here for Mosaic on Polar Stern. So we have some current work, of course. This is uh, longer than this, but just to give you some ideas, um, we are setting up virtual environments, for example, to generate 3D models of the ocean floor, building blocks for machine learning are on the way. We are uh, figuring out how to use Kubernetes to uh, allow uh, scaling on, of computing res resources here. An um, interesting point and um, important point is a repository of drivers for data ingest. So each institute, each group has some driver scripts to get the data together and interpret the data formats and so on. And we like to go to the community and collect it together and provide a repository for the whole stuff here. The last point. Just a further example here is uh, computing on GPUs. Currently, we have just CPUs and high performance computing, and we are searching for some solution in between. So, um, our approach, uh, let's say, in les lessons, lessons, lessons learned here, is to provide and illustrate the added value to the scientists give incentives. So if you use the whole framework and put your metadata in the first slide uh, in sensor, then you can grab your data and get it to, uh, together in very simple ways. So, and the point is also to make hands-on use as easy as possible. So are we providing um, regular user sessions, for example, to get the information and feedback from the users and give feedback directly back. Yeah, this is the point here. What we currently do is ideas about data management plans and how it fits together with the whole data flow here. So if I have a, an idea for a project, it's a bit fuzzy and it will concrete, more concrete as time evolves here, but how we can bind it to the whole data flow it's in point. A large point in the background is legacy systems. We have archives and information systems which are not integrated yet or have to be integrated and and topic is here harmonization of vocabularies for devices, actions, parameters, whatever. What I have forgotten um, in the sensor component is that we, we are using as as much as possible the uh, NERC vocabulary. So we are aligned, <coughs> but not fully today. Um, the next days, um, Saturday is starting. We are on Polar Stand to building the mentioned new data center. It's a petabyte storage here and computing solutions on board of Polar Stand to support the Mosaic project. And what we have there is um, almost all components of the data flow also on the ship here. And we are building a solution with uh, Kepler systems to upload um, data from the, from the research vessel to the land station and what's about mass data. So in theory you can put, let's say, I, I assume it was uh, 75 gigabytes 
uh, to the <coughs> satellite and don't stream it to the LAN station. The last topic here is sample management. There are solutions out there. We have also several solutions at RV for co cores, sediments, ice cores, whatever. Also samples from specimen, whatever. And it has to be integrated in the line together. That's an other topic we have to do. Um, a slide to mention or uh, questions here. I think we have some discussions about it the next days. What about continuous measurements? So if you have um, measurements and how to track the sensor information and how to align it together. And what is about uh, combined, combined data sets? If you're uh, thinking about Pangaea, it's a data sets are at most a, a combination of sensor, uh, sensor measurements, uh, for example, and how do I how to identify which sensor information is aligned to uh, which measurement here. Agreements on formats and semantics would be fruitful. So not only in small projects, but multidisciplinary, if possible, data management plans must be actionable and simple. And we have to integrate data products and prepare it for further use. So, I'm mostly done here. I was one last to mention that's a team effort here and here on the bottom line we have some colleagues here. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>